Sometimes, athletes push their bodies a little too far. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 horrific sports injuries. You know, I just, each day I got more confident. It's, it's hours and hours of torture, but uh, he was there every day uh, putting in the work and sustaining the pain. For this list, we're looking at the most horrific and cringeworthy injuries suffered by athletes. However, we're not including injuries resulting in death, nor are we including those injuries suffered as the result of malicious intent. As we already have those covered in our Top 10 Unsportsmanlike Moments in Pro Sports video. Some of these injuries are extremely graphic, so viewer discretion is advised. Oh my, oh my God, what happened? Number 10, Trent McCleary, Injury, Fractured Larynx. Hockey players are some of the most fearless athletes out there. On January 29, 2000, Montreal Canadiens forward Trent McCleary proved it by dropping to the ice to block a slap shot from Philadelphia Flyers defenseman Chris Terrian. The puck hit McCleary in his throat from only a few feet away, however, fracturing his larynx and causing a collapsed lung. They dislocated my jaw and opened my airway so some air could get in. McCleary was minutes away from dying on the ice, but the medical staff at the Montreal Arena was able to partially open his airway and he was rushed to hospital for an emergency tracheotomy so time-sensitive, McCleary was still in his skates during the procedure. But the operation saved his life. Would I have done anything different? No. And that's, I, I can sleep at night with that fact. Number 9. Anderson Silva, Injury, Broken Fibula. He's dead! He's out! He's out! And it is all over! Anderson Silva wow. has knocked out Boris Griffin! Anderson the Spider Silva currently holds the Ultimate Fighting Championship streak for longest title defense with 16 consecutive wins. This streak ended with a defeat at the hands of Chris Weidman, however, in July of 2013. Anderson, oh my, he got hit! Look at the finish it! Hit it to a rematch between the two fighters was held on December 28, 2013, but this fight went even worse for Silva. He oh no! He hurt, his, he hurt his leg, and it is all over! In the second round, Weidman checked one of Silva's leg kicks, which resulted in a horrific break for the Brazilian fighter. Silva's foot literally wrapped around Weidman's leg. Silva would rally, however, and defeat Nick Diaz in UFC 183 in his return although that win was tainted by charges of drug use. Number 8. Moises Alou, Injury, Dislocated Ankle and Fractured Fibula The lack of physical contact makes baseball one of the safer sports, but the injury suffered by Montreal Expos outfielder Moises Alou was truly horrific. Playing at St. Louis's Bush Stadium on September 16, 1993, Alou shot a ball into left field and subsequently took a wide turn while rounding a base. As he attempted to stop and retreat to the bag, his ankle snapped and looked as though it had been turned 90 degrees. Even an umpire seeing exactly what we saw couldn't look. Alou had to be carried off the field and missed the rest of the 1993 season. Number 7. Sid Vicious, Injury, Snapped Tibia and Fibula I don't think anybody can see this video and not feel something in the pit of their stomach. Wrestling is supposed to be scripted and choreographed, but we have a hard time believing this injury to Sid Vicious was planned. On January 14, 2001, facing pressure from World Championship Wrestling Management to expand his repertoire of moves, Vicious attempted an aerial maneuver on Scott Steiner called the Big Boot from the second turnbuckle. Oh, that is look, so look at the, difficult. Look, look at the left foot. He landed awkwardly on his left leg, however, snapping both his tibia and fibula, with the bones breaking through the skin. Vicious needed two hours of surgery and a 17-inch rod in his leg, and required a cane to walk for a while afterwards. I gave everything I had to give to this business, and I literally mean that. Amazingly, he eventually stepped back into the ring, returning to the WWE in 2012. Psycho Sid! Brother, if you think AJ's a little psycho, this is the guy that invented being psycho. Number six. Kevin Ware, injury, broken tibia. Coach P just kind of gave me one of those looks like, like somebody just saw a ghost or something like that. It's one thing when a professional athlete suffers a horrible injury, but it's truly tragic when it happens at the college level to young athletes who are not even earning any money. Oh my goodness. 
That is a gruesome looking injury to Kevin Ware. On March 31, 2013, Louisville Cardinals guard Kevin Ware suffered one of the most gruesome injuries you will ever see in an Elite Eight game against the Duke Blue Devils. Ware attempted to block a three-point shot, but when he landed, he snapped his tibia, which resulted in the bone protruding out of his shin. Look at the bench. The players on the bench and fans in the first few rows were visibly shaken after seeing the extent of the injury as was the entire internet when the clip went viral. I'm gonna rehab as hard as I can and I'm gonna get back on the court like there's no tomorrow. Number five, Jibril Sisse. Injury, broken tibia and fibula. Some people have the worst luck. And while Jibril Sisse is a football star, we'd still say he has some bad luck as he broke both of his legs in the span of less than two years. The first incident came on October 30th, 2004 while he was playing for Liverpool, when Cissé's boot got caught in the turf, snapping the tibia and fibula in his left leg. An injury that was supposedly so serious, the athlete easily could have lost his leg below the knee. Then, while playing for France in a warm-up game against China on June 7, 2006, Cissé's right boot got caught in the turf once again, resulting in another nasty broken leg. The kick to the back of the leg and it is broken right there, and Cissé's World Cup is done. Amazingly, Cissé recovered from both injuries and scored more than 50 goals over two seasons from 2009 to 2011. Cissé, and they've got it back to two apiece. It's another head up from close range. Gibral Cissé scores against his former club. Number four, Willis McGahey, injury, torn ACL, PCL, and MCL. Here it goes. Willis McGahee! Returning to college sports once again, Willis McGahee was one of the most important players on the 2002 Miami Hurricanes team that finished the season ranked number one in the polls. Bust up everything, Will Allen coming like a truck, takes on McGahee and takes him down. In the 2003 Fiesta Bowl National Championship game against Ohio State, the Hurricanes found themselves down 17 to 14 in the fourth quarter. McGahee caught a screen pass, but was immediately hit low by Ohio safety Will Allen. McGahee's knee bent backwards, resulting in ACL, PCL, and MCL tears. To end this entry on a positive note, after a long rehabilitation process, McGahee eventually made the NFL and had a successful career. I mean, it feels good because, you know, a lot of people counted me out coming into this year. And, you know, nobody expected me to do this, but me and my coach, and, you know, Coach Fox, they have faith in me. Number three, Joe Theismann, injury, comminuted compound leg fracture. Washington Redskins QB Joe Theismann had a successful NFL career that saw him win one Super Bowl. However, he may be best remembered for suffering through what was labeled by the Washington Post as the hit that no one who saw it can ever forget, and the resulting injury that ended his career on November 18, 1985. Dropping back to pass in a Monday night football game against the rival New York Giants, Theismann was hit by Lawrence Taylor, with Gary Reasons and Harry Carson also piling on. Taylor's knee hit Theismann with such force that it snapped his tibia and fibula. You know it's bad when the opposing players are desperately calling for medical assistance. And it was bad. Theismann was forced to retire at the age of 36. I still want to play. I really, really, really want to play football. Number two. Clint Malarchuk, injury, sliced carotid artery, and jugular vein. Each, each side of that, of that skate blade has a microscopic edge that is razor sharp. Considering how sharp hockey players keep their skates, it's remarkable we don't see more serious lacerations. Oh boy, Zednik, oh my goodness. Oh my god, he's bleeding bad. Richard Zednik is cut quick. wide open. Quick. Oh my god. Florida Panthers forward Richard Zednik suffered a horrific injury in 2008 when his throat was accidentally cut by a teammate's skate. But nothing compares to Clint Malarchuk. The goaltender for the Buffalo Sabres, Malarchuk and his team were facing the St. Louis Blues on March 22, 1989, when the goalie's carotid artery was severed by a skate blade in a collision in the crease. Oh, look in! That is the... Oh, my God. Oh, please take the camera off oh, and don't please. even bring it over there. Though Malarchuk had already requested a priest, his life was miraculously saved by the team's athletic trainer, a Vietnam vet and a former army medic, who pinched off the blood vessel until doctors arrived. In total, 
Malarchuk lost 1.5 liters of blood and required 300 stitches. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. And watch this punch and look at the blood spray out of it. You know, I, I can see it there. Look at that. Oh man, that is nasty. And the pupil of his eye pops out of the socket. And the linebacker Lathers comes in and hits him in the right knee. Oh no. You know, when I came down, my knee just, it, it wasn't under me. No finish though by Sean and he's hurt. Number one. Alex McKinnon, injury, broken neck. Everyone in sport, not just rugby league, they're in, they're in total shock. It's been said that rugby is a hooligan sport played by gentlemen. And rugby players arguably put their bodies on the line more than any other athlete. The most beautiful athlete you've ever seen, 22 years old. Unfortunately for rugby league player Alex McKinnon, this resulted in a life-changing injury. Now McKinnon going into the turf, head first. Playing for the Newcastle Knights in 2014, McKinnon was involved in a dangerous play when he was tackled by Melbourne Storm forward Jordan McLean, and his head was driven hard into the ground. The collision fractured two of McKinnon's vertebrae, paralyzing him on the spot in one of the scariest scenes ever in a sporting event. Remarkably, McKinnon was able to stand up after just 10 months of rehab and still believes he will one day be able to walk again. Do you agree with our list? Which sports injury do you think was the worst? For more exciting top 10s published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com.